This one we get started for this Python course, the Python in the media programming. I think that uh, the basic one you guys probably don't need, but I will go over the basic topic uh, today as well. Okay. So lecture one, using Python as a pilot language for, for problem solving. Okay. So for Python course, we uh, for myself actually I design courses like this, and then. The idea is the basic Python is this one. The basic Python is this one. Okay. We will probably spend some time today to, to just go over the whole thing for this uh, topic. And then the data structure or something is over here. And then we also have the library and object oriented programming. That's just like uh, APCSB. Uh, I mean, the second course for. Uh, for Java, for Python, it's just like something like that. And then there's a advanced compiler design course for the programming. And there's a math course in the summer, we cover some of them, but it actually also belong to this green one. So the purpose of studying Python right now, because most of the AI courses actually is focused on Python language, they need that. Okay, and also Python can be used to drive C language programs. So it become very, 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 very important right now. Okay, MIT, uh, Berkeley, UC Berkeley, and also CMU, these three school, the top uh, programming school, all use the uh, Python as a first language. And then Stanford recently dropped Java uh, as the first language. They, they don't, they, they didn't kick it out, but they actually announced that they no longer require uh, Java as the first uh, programming course. So you can choose JavaScript or Python as the first course now uh, as the requirement for uh, for for Stanford. So then the middle course, the screen course is also really important. It's going to the graphic design, game design, keep cute, database design, the wireless uh, networks. A lot of things is actually on the this screen course. Okay, the second one. It's very uh, popular right now, and it has a lot of application. So Python language uh, feature is actually broader than broader than Java. Java more focus on database and internet, and Python right now is actually everywhere. It's almost everywhere. Some people all even develop Python for the robot, little robot like uh, uh, what's that Raspberry uh, Pi uh, de device. So now let's get started for the data structure. And this little portion I probably will go through, at uh, least portion actually I will go through really fast. So basically we will look at the, what is data structure and what is algorithm. And data structure and algorithm, as I mentioned before, computer science major actually is using computer to do problem solving, and then you use a scientific way to solve problem, okay? And then the, 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 the thing that we talk about, the competitive programming is also, is also, is also uh, problem solving based, okay? And to solve problem, actually you need to come up with solution and also come up with the right programming. So the right programming, you need to come with the right data structure and solution, you need to invent new algorithm, okay? So that's why data structure and algorithm are mixed together, but usually uh, data structure is easier than uh, than, than uh, algorithm. So in Java, we actually uh, talk about basically a little bit, but not a lot of the abstract data type. Okay, so basically the course is like OOP, you finish that, and then you touch file processing, you touch exception handling. These are different classes, okay, these are different classes. They are classes that help you to deal with this. You deal with the math class, string class, right, after you finish OOP, and then you fit, uh, deal with the generic programming, this one with the angle bracket, Okay, T, that type of uh, problem. And then all of these, you continue to work on the ADT, abstract data type. 
and then it include the stat, queue, set, map, and and link list those kind of thing. And pretty much some of them like link list in the, the end of AP computer science we touch some of these. Okay, and here in in uh, Python we will start from basically also from here and here. Okay generic programming and, and these are different data structure. And then these different thing from time to time I will try to uh, make make up for you guys because I think both of you are better than these. So but but you still need to know about what is the programming feature for that. And in terms of programming if you are in the competition whether you choose uh, Java or or Python, I think Java still be safer because for example today's uh, problem set as the problem goes up, Python's uh, speed will go down. Okay, but Python is good for study of the AI, but actually for some problem, actually is too slow. Okay, but it's good to study the data structure or use it as a as a uh, pseudo code. Okay, so algorithm and data structure are known patterns. So that the part we just go over, and I don't think this we need to go about, uh, talk about. It. Now, what is Algorithm analysis. Algorithm analysis has two. Uh, algorithm study has two uh, important uh, issues. Okay, algorithm basically is known patterns. Okay, it's actually known design pattern. So you use that algorithm to solve problem, right? But some problem actually you have no algorithm, so we call it ad hoc solution, you should come up with your own solution or invent new algorithm to solve it. Okay, but an algorithm after you finish, you have to analyze the program because you need to check whether the program is scalable or not. When the problem say n goes up, whether it's solvable or not. Second, resource, is resource enough or not? How much resource you need to allocate? Computer, CPU time, and then your storage how much storage you need. And these different issues, actually, you need to study your memory, your CPU, how you do your program, like array or array list. Okay? And this morning, actually, I worked on the problem uh, for that milk problem. I initially used array list, and then I give up to just use an array and actually improve the performance. Eventually, it's actually improved a lot. Okay? It actually improved a lot. But something like that actually, sometimes you cannot foresee, and then you have to map the problem, and then you, but at least you need to know when to change gear to different solution, okay? And you, and how can you uh, just change course really quick so that you can uh, finish, still finish within the time limit, okay? That's the portion that we need to know. So study of algorithm, even using the different language like Python, it still it will get the idea, so don't worry. Python is just like a pseudocode. Just like some algorithm courses, they actually use English, plain English as pseudocode. So don't worry about the language issue, okay? So basically this course has two goals. One, to study algorithm and data structure, that's a known problem, and then to compare them or invent new one, okay? That's a two purpose for studying algorithm and data structure. And in fact, this one we, we look at right now is only the data structure part. The deep, difficult uh, algorithm portion, we actually will need you use the compatibility programming uh, handbook to, to make up for that portion, okay? But data structure will be here. And this portion, computer science and algorithm, I think this is fine. This I don't need to spend more time to explain that, okay? These are okay, you guys are okay. Okay. Now let's look at the data structure and the uh, and the, the relationship of data structure and <coughs> of the data structure and uh, algorithm. Okay, so the data structure is like okay. I'm I'm trying to search over this the so-called depth first search, right? So I can actually build a tree-like data structure like this, or I can actually use a stack. Okay, either way will solve the problem. Which is better? It depends. Depends on which one you use. But algorithm itself is to develop some 
some of the code so that you can solve the problem. But before you you actually uh, decide some some solution to use some solution, you actually need to make decision for which data structure you use. And your solution or your algorithm will depend on that. For example, the depth first search, okay? Uh, you, you can actually go down from here, actually from zero. From zero to one, to three, and then to four, and then to five, and then come back to here, to two, to six. Okay, so this depth first search, you will have zero, one, uh, three, four, five, and then uh, this mm. one. What's that? Two and two and six. Mm. Okay, that's the order that you you have. Okay, so so actually, uh, so actually, that's the order you have. And and if you use a tree structure and do that first search, the order of traversal still be this. You go. Left child first, mm -hmm. and then if they, you run out of left child, you come back and then do middle child and then do right child and come back. Okay, so it's a right first, actually it's down first, go bottom first, and then and then uh, left first. Okay, so it's, if you can have any child, you go to the child first, left child first, and then if you finish your left child, you try middle child and then right child. Okay, this is called the first search. Okay. But the same traversal, you can also uh, find another way to solve the problem. It's the right hand side using stack. So basically, initially, if I see uh, this zero, I push it into my stack. Okay, I push it into my stack. And then I see one, I push one into my stack. And I see three, I push into my stack. And then there's no child, right? No child, so I pop out my three, and then I push in my four, and then there's no more child in four, so I pop out four, and then push five in, okay, and then no more child for five, it push, pop out five, push, and then it come back to here, and <clears throat> there's no left child, so I try the right child, then I push two in, okay, and then pop out, uh, and then and then I push six in, and then pop out and you will get the same result, okay? And then how to push on top of these, actually there are some rules, you can do that, okay? You can you can organize your symbol to help you to push and pop with a simple sequence of these. So basically, you can do this. <clears throat> you can have like, uh, you can have a zero, right? And you have uh, one, and then you have three, four, five, okay? And then you have two, okay? And you have six, okay, I'm sorry. You have six, okay? And this is the child for it, this is a child for it, and these two are the child for it. Okay, using this representation, you see a, uh, this so-called uh, lab, lab, Bracket, you push zero in, see a lap bracket, push zero in. See a lap bracket, push three in. And then you don't see any lap one, and then so you pop three out, and then you don't see lap one, you pop three, four out. And then you don't see five, and then you pop five out. And then you pop one out, and then you see another lap one, you push two in. And then you see six, you push six in, and then you see I'm sorry, you, you actually don't see anything and then you pop six out and pop two out. It's okay? It's okay? That's using the... Okay. That's using uh, some sort of the parentheses to match the tree structure. And use that, you actually can also do the depth first search, okay? So right here, actually, I'm not trying to teach you the whole detail of this tree and, and uh, parentheses notation, okay? I'm just trying to give you the idea of same problem I can solve by stack and with the help of parentheses. I can also, I can also uh, build a tree to solve it. So different data structure lead to different algorithm. That's the whole thing that I'm trying to uh, show right here. And that is the topic that we are going to study for the whole course right here, okay? And you need to know about the 
efficiency. But when you are doing competitive programming, you have to be aware what is the best uh, algorithm. And, and usually the best algorithm, uh, data structure, I'm sorry. What is the de best data structure? And usually the best data structure is very simple. Uh, most of the time, array will be enough. And on top of it, you try something a little bit more difficult, but you would need to be aware of the efficiency of the, of the data structure. So here we have a data abstraction. And I believe we talked about this before. We had the primitive data type and then basic ADT, the abstract data type, okay? And then vector and then word set and then spell. So higher, it was higher uh, abstraction, lower portion, more physical. And then uh, we uh, basically, uh, data structure is trying to uh, use the higher level of abstraction to help to solve problem uh, more nicely. Okay, that's the purpose of using the data structure. So data structure, basic data structure, ADT type, including the queue, including the set, and including map and step, okay? And queue, and later we will be talk, uh, talk about this. So here, today I'm going to show you as well. Today I'm going to go over the, uh, the Python as well. So here we have the step. Step is what? First in, last out, okay? Q is actually first in, first out. Set is no order, so H is also T of D, you have A, B, C, and then, and then it's no order. Map is actually something like dictionary, you have a some sort of key and value. So maybe uh, you, you have some key and value, say number zero, is actually called A, and number one, you call B, something like that. The key and value pair, it's called map, okay? So these are the basic data type. But today I'm going to show you in Python, simple Python to, to show all of these different data types, okay? And that actually is, that actually is the part of the chapter one. So I'm trying my best to finish the chapter one right here for this book, okay? So right now we are on the basic computer science programming and then study of the programming and later you will go into the basic uh, idea of the Python classes and control structure. So that's the purpose for having this one, okay? And that is the data structure. And then object-oriented programming, we know this for quite well for procedural pro Obsession on the left hand side, object oriented uh, programming on the right hand side. And then what, what does uh, obsession really help us is to make the program reusable, in the implementation in uh, independent, modularization, information hiding, and the easy for maintenance. Okay, here a few different uh, advantages. Uh, we will show this later. Okay, and why study algorithm to learn the design patterns? Okay, and then these are the new language. So first, the first language that actually come out is sequential language, and later we have the structure uh, programming. So this one including C language, and then Fortran, those type of language, and then also assembly is over here. And after Smalltalk and, and Java, we move to object-oriented programming. Okay. And then and then we move up to uh, uh, object-oriented with Java. Okay. And then uh, later, C, C++, C++ 17, uh, Java has the generic. Okay. I'm sorry, this one should be 11. Okay. And then C 17. C double plus 17 start to have functional programming. And Python, to be honest, Python have everything. Okay, that's why it's most uh, appropriate for AI language. It has everything, every feature that you can see over here. It's born to be having all the feature over here. But the only problem with Python is that sometimes it's too slow. And that need to be made up by, by other language. Like Python is a scripting language, so you can drive C, C double plus as well. But for competition, most of the time you try um, not to use too many structure, try to use imperative as much as possible. If you cannot do it, you go to the object or go to generic or go to functional programming. But 
usually the assembly is the fast, fastest programming style. So try to stay uh, conservative. Okay. <coughs> These are different language features, but we basically don't need that. So the role of Python in AI, okay. Python is a language with the best compilation of Lisp, uh, Java both, okay. And so it somewhat like Java in some sense, but it actually improved it with the Lisp. And Lisp is the first functional programming language. So it, it is born with object-oriented feature of Java and also functional programming feature of Lisp, okay. And then, okay, because of this feature, so Java also good for GUI demonstration, also good for portable design, and also good for AI languages, okay. Okay, these few things, I think when we meet it, we will, we will have that. Okay, we finished the first uh, slice. Second, let's look at the analysis portion. Let me see. Okay, this is chapter two already. Let me, let me actually check the slides. That analysis chapter two. So now let's go to Python, okay? Go to Python language about the basic Python uh, and data types and collection types, okay? So let's go to Python. Okay, I jump directly to the important portion. And right now I'm trying to provide a review of the Python language. Okay, I know you guys put in several things, but now let's look at the Python language. Uh, I just give you a very brief, but I think it will be a detailed uh, review for that. So the first thing we will talk about is, for every language, first thing we talk about is the data type, right? So Python has three primitive data type, okay? String, Boolean, and number, okay? In Java, you have integer type, right? And you have short, you have byte, you have int, you have long, you have big integer, okay? Fine, I'm sorry, this one actually one object type, but usually it's not counted as primitive data type, okay? But the reason why I, I also included this big, big integer is because all of these actually just one type in Python. Also you have float and you have double. They are also belong to numbers. So basically Python number is with the whole thing and also big, big decimal, I'm sorry. There is another thing called big decimal. Okay, so Python language actually grew up totally eight different data type into a number type. Okay, and because Python's, no matter what data it is, it's all objects. There is no, no, no simple integer x equals three and then x assigned with three. No, there's nothing like this. Every Python number are uh, object. So it always has the, you can do conversion to a number that is its own member function. That is actually its own member function. So a Python number, let me show you a slice. A Python number, the Python number actually whole number are represented using the integer data type. It's an object type, okay? It's object type. This value can be positive or negative whole number. So it's something like this, it's an object. It's not like C type. You put a number into a certain memory location. It actually is an object, high object type digit one. Is that okay? Hello? Yeah. Is that okay? So Python number actually is a object type. And then let's look at this. There's a Boolean type. So Boolean has truth and false, okay? But Python's true false basically need to be aware it's capital. The leading letter is capital for a constant, T or F. Okay, so data type that I will talk about is the string. Python string, you have single quote, double quote, or triple quote. You can put an A over there, over there, over there. It's all the same. And also, 
A, B is okay. A, B, C is okay. It's all string. One character, multiple character, all string. So there is no difference between character and the string. Okay. okay. It's only one type. So it's quite simple. Basically, you just need to know what is a Boolean or number or string. Can you operate on like the ASCII code in Python? ASCII code, yes, of course. Yeah, you can operate everything in Python. Okay, but that's only okay. for one letter, right? Okay, before we jump to other construction, you know, there are eight different data types we shown here, okay? Let's go to a, a example, okay? Because talking is easy, let's go to the example. Let me new a project, okay? And because this one belongs to Python Intermediate Program Data Structure Project. So let me put it into this Py uh, 2018. Oh, it's a unit three. Let me actually create in a new folder called unit one. Okay, and then here let me try uh, data types. Um, data type oh, is okay. Data types okay. So let me create a directory over here. Uh, Sharon, have you installed the Python and Python interpreter? I don't think so. Okay, then maybe some other day I tr try to find a time and I help you to do installation. Okay. So right here, let me actually uh, show you the type data types. Okay, so A equals three. B equals three point five. Okay, print a print type of a. Okay, print b print type of b. Okay, and then print. Okay. What 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 are these? Uh, maybe which one? Okay, whatever. I don't know which. Probably this type is not allowed to print, but it's okay. I don't care about it. So you print out a. So a actually is a number, right? And you print out type of A, type of A is actually an object, so it's class integer, is that okay? So this one is your class integer. We have B, right, and we print out the type of B, it's a 14 point. And then we print out type of type of B, A, so type of A is a function, return the type, and then it actually is a class type. Okay, so, so basically you remember that uh, in, in Java, in Java, you have the object, right? Object type. And object type, you have the two string, you have equals, right? You have another one called hash code, right? And there's another function called uh, get class, right? You remember that one? So the get yeah. class actually will give you the class object. Same thing here, the type will give you the class object. But it's called type, it's not called class. Is okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, for this. So so now these are good. Okay. And then then what I'll do is like if I have C equals A plus B, okay, and then let's print this. So this C automatically being converted to Flow type, right? Okay, let me let me delete this guy. Probably this guy create trouble. Okay, let me delete that guy. He probably doesn't like the even though he pro printed out. Oh my god, what's going on? Well, it's probably a trash bag. Import problem. Fail to. Import site that 
Wait a minute, something wrong right here. <clears throat> I don't know. Okay, anyway, I, I think it's something wrong with my package or something. Okay, don't worry about it. At least the, the C type in uh, print now, okay. I probably need to try some other program. Probably this one has a special setup. This project has a special setup. So I don't know. Okay, let me let me try another program if that actually is continue to have this problem. If I just do such a simple thing. Oh, actually it's a environment problem, I think. Why this site of PUI has some problem? Let me actually quit it, okay? Let me just run this one and see. I just run it yesterday, so. Yeah, so this one no problem. Okay, so that's related to that uh, project issue, okay? <clears throat> but anyway, let me actually open it again. Okay. So it's chapter three. No, let me see. Let me try to use this one, okay? Chapter three, okay? So let me actually turn down this one, turn down. So for a command, actually you can do a punch sign, okay? Do punch sign. You comment all these out, okay? And then actually, let me turn down this one. The integer type, okay? <clears throat> so integer type actually here I have similar definition. So the only thing that you need to take care of in the data type is the double slash. It means integer division, okay? So all of the operator similar to uh, it's basically all the operation similar to Java except that two operators, okay? Number one is uh, integer division. So you have plus minus times uh, division and modular, that's the same, okay? And then you have, the only difference you have is like, this one is floor type uh, division. This one is integer division, right? So, so basically you have A divided by B, you got Q, uh, B times Q, you remember R, right? So this one is this integer division, right? This R is taken by this modular. And then if you were Q dot A, B, C something, this one is using the 14 type uh, division. Is that okay? Okay. And then power, you use double star. So two to the power of four, I will give you 16, uh, 16. Okay, that's another operator that Java don't have. Java, you need to use power two, four. Okay, that's another operator that you don't have. Okay, about numbers, it's about something like this, okay? These are about numbers. String type, string type, let's look at string type. String type is a single A, you type, uh, check the type, it will be string. And you actually print out A, that's a fine. And then ABT, you print out this one. And you can concord it in a string like this, it's fine. Okay? And then and then you can print out C, the whole thing. And then backslash U, this will be Unicode. Similar to similar to uh, Java, okay? And then you can print now C5. C5 means the C uh, index file location. So this one actually is what? Easier to, easier than, than, uh, than Python. I'm, I'm sorry, Java. So, so this one is called slicing, okay? So basically, if you have C equals A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? Then C of one actually means B, right? C of zero means A, right? And this C of minus one means F. 
So basically, when you do minus one, it means n minus one. It means c uh, length of c minus one. So this one's minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. Is that okay? You can also use the minus sign to do indexing. So the oh, you can do that. yeah, you can do this. Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> Yep. And and also and also for substring, okay? So so basically chapter at C of I'm sorry, C equals this A, B, C, D, E, F. So so C of zero means C dot character at zero. So it's actually faster, you know, it's actually faster. And then substring C of one, three will be one, two, three. So actually, it will give you B and C. Three letters. Letters. That that this one not included. No, I'm saying, can you like C of five equals something? C of five equals something. Yes, you can do this. You can do assignment. Yes. You can do that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 So so basically, this is used just like a character array as well. Somewhat like a character array, and you can do this. This means zero to three. Okay. You can do this three. This this means from three to the length uh, of the of C. But not including the, the length of C. Is that okay? So this to the end of the string, this one from the starting of the string. All, all of these are okay. These are called slicing. The, the terminology of this in Python is called slicing. Okay, and, and Java doesn't have slicing. So in terms of operation for, for Python, uh, it actually is faster. Okay, so let me turn down the integer portion and then turn out turn up this integer po uh, the string portion and then let's run it okay so basically the the plus sign you will concatenate everything together okay you print out like this and then the unicode being print out okay and then you slice somewhere you get you can print that out Okay, and actually, the, the next one is like the type change. Okay, the type change actually is okay that in the middle of somewhere you just assign the same variable with different variable type. That actually is allowed. Why? Because every every Python object is object. Every Python variable is an object. So it's just like you have the, this one just like, it's conceptually you think about it in, in Java's way, it's actually just like you declare something called object. A equals something, right? And then later this A assigned with this A. Is that okay? And then both of them are object type, sometimes some sort of object type, so it's okay. But don't use the street don't use the strict object uh, idea from Java to think about Python. Python actually, this is okay. You can change the data type right away. So, so, so here, right, right here, I actually can do print type of A. Okay, and here I also do type of A. So actually, these are two different type. Okay, I don't know what happened to the my previous environment. Something wrong. So, so I just don't do that, okay? So this actually one is string type. So single character is also string type. Okay, and if I do double, double quote, double quote, that still is a string type, okay? And if you do using the single quote three times, I'm sorry, uh, single quote three times, 
Okay? Again, that's still a string. Is that okay? Single quote, double quote, triple quote. Okay, quote, so quote, there's quote. no there's no character. Well, you can tell it's a string. Okay. I shouldn't say there's no character. Character is a string. Single character is a string, but there's no separate type for it. Okay? And then that's that. That's this uh, data type. This one is the Boolean type. Okay. Boolean type actually, we know truths or false, right? Boolean ev evaluation is easy. Here, the only Boolean type I would like to talk about is this one called conditional statement. Okay. This is the way that Python do conditional statement. So basically, this whole thing will return true if this happened, else will do them for. If you write it in uh, Java's way, it would be x 10 modular by 2 equals 2, uh, 0, and then question mark 2, colon, else, a uh, force. It should be lowercase, OK? So so the, the, the Boolean expression is written over here. OK, true return type will be written here. Force with uh force written that would will be put here. Is that okay? <clears throat> okay. That's other than that I think it's similar, okay? And one more thing is that there is no bracket, so you use indentation to know about the code block level. So from here to here it actually uh is one level, okay? One level. One level, okay. But if you have four loops, we may push it in inner level. We will look at that later, okay? So that is Boolean type, and I don't think I need to run it, okay? Next one is the formatted print, okay? Formatted print. You have some data you would like to print now, your, your data, okay? So here we have formatted, we have A, B, right? So actually I can do this. This one is similar to the format, string data format in Java. Okay, this one is similar to string type format in Java. So basically, what will, what will happen is my A will be used to replace this. My B will be used to replace this. And here, you need to have a, a bracket. Okay, so you might have only one number. I should put A, and here percentage D, for example. And this one replace this. Okay. And this whole thing is equivalent to string, that format, and then percentage D, and then comma, A. This one is like that in Java, okay? This one like that in Java. This one like that in Java. And then, and then this, this format is in Python. And Python has another a type of format, but I right now I don't want you guys to get confused. So, so try to use this primary. The, it has its own special uh, positional notation, but that actually is not popular and not really useful. But when you have two variable, you want to put into here percentage d percentage d. Okay. In the middle, you also need to have a percentage sign. This one actually is a bridge between the left hand side string. Right hand side, we call it tuple. Okay, well, is the first data structure I talk about tuple. Tuple means that two variable x and y, uh, z, w, whatever two variable or two data one two is a tuple. Two tuple. Okay, and what why why is it has uh, this uh, two tuple stuff? Let me try again. Okay, let me try to create another project. Let me see. That's time. Why this one? Data type. Okay. Let me try again. Okay, I try to create a project over here again. Let me try the environment. Okay, this one's okay. Create. So right here, let me new a Python file. 
So here, what what am I trying to do? Okay, I'm trying to show what's tuple, right? Let me see here. This is called a tuple. Okay, three and four is called a tuple. Okay, so we actually can do this. We can do, we can do this one. A tuple can only have two. Yeah, no, 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 no. You actually have many. Tuple is an iterable. You can do this, right? Another point. S and Y. Okay, I can print S and Y. And I can also print here. I may have a C equals. A, B, okay. So here I can put C. I'm trying to teach you what's top of right here, okay. So this one, S, Y, is a separate two variable. So this one is called multiple assignment. This is multiple assignment. I'm sorry. So basically you can do A, B, C equals one, two, three. But this A, B, C is not tuple. It's not a tuple type, okay? But if you put this one, two, three, then this A, B, C is associated together. A assigned to this, this to that, to this, this assigned to this. But you form a tuple, but this tuple is actually not assigned to anybody. But here you use that one, not assigned to C, so C become a data type called tuple. So tuple is a convenient type for if some sometimes you want to return two variable, right? In Java is difficult. You have to create some some data type like point s y, right? New point s y, and then return that. You need to create a new class. But in in Python, no, it's okay. You just can return whatever you want to have. So here, let me define some function. Okay. Here I can define some function, f of a and b, okay. Uh, let's don't do this, okay. Let's just do here like a equals, okay, uh, random. Let me import uh, random. For random number generator. Okay. Because render is a class, right here you need to do random dot rend. Uh, it's called random range. So random range also use zero to five. So it, for example, if you want to generate uh, the die, you need to put one and seven. So it's starting from one to six. Seven not included. Okay, so the, here is a, a and B equals the same thing. Okay, and then I return tuple. Okay, I can return tuple. So here actually I can have D equals. Uh, this one called F, right, and point D. Okay, this is one way that you can actually uh, collect two variable back, okay? And there's, a, maybe I can also uh, actually copy this one and test this one, right? And here I don't do parentheses. It's okay that I don't do parentheses, but I can use the feature of double assignment. So here let me do E and F equals G of X of G function. So here let me change it to G. 
Yeah. And then actually I can print now EMF. Okay, if you look at this, the tuple actually has some feature that actually grouping data together. That's the only purpose it has. Otherwise, you can also do a multiple assignment, multiple return. So here it actually multiple return is allowed. Is that okay? Okay. Multiple return is allowed in this language. Uh, hi, Sherwin, how, how long can you go? Let me have um, Can we end by like no layer 545? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just want to have some idea because we still can do something later, right? So a lot of code from using this stuff. Okay, so this is a so-called type of tuple. So the tuple actually, our data type, okay, tuples. We talk about the basic data type. Now we have the first idea of the tuple. Okay, tuple actually, it is wrong. It's actually wrong. It's an older data type. And, but, but the tuple actually, tuple actually is what? Using the parentheses, so a T, equals one, two, three, that's a tuple. Okay, that's a tuple. Okay, let that, that me just show you another function, usually. Wait, 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 I have a question, I have a question. Yes, go. Is the tuple kind of like an array? No, okay. it's actually a group of data. Oh. It's just a group of data. So this is more like an array, okay? But okay. Oh. most of them actually not, not the same as uh, so, so here let me show you another example. Okay, I got a TCD or NMM, right? Okay, and then if M equals zero, then I will return N. Okay, here say, I have a GCD, right? I'm trying to use the, trying to find, using the Euclid uh, algorithm to do GCD, okay? So what happened is like, I have 40A, I have 32, so I actually divide this, 32, 16, to 32, zero, okay? So basically I have my, N and M, right? So this guy is actually uh, N divided by M. This guy is N take modular by M, right? So so the first time I do this, actually I have my N and M, and I have this one and this one. So the second time, my M should be assigned to N, and then N mass N N take modular by M need to be assigned to my M. So here actually what uh, if if eventually the M the remainder become zero so I will return N. Otherwise I should return I should return what? I should return my G C D of my M and N take modular by M. Now we'll find my G C D. This one the Euclidean algorithm. Okay, pretty short. Okay, and every function, every uh, declaration of a com composite structure, you need to put a, uh, a a column. If the same thing, if you can write it here, like next line and with some indentation, and this return actually the same level is if, and the the, the this one is in the inner le level with the, this one with the inner level of the if. And, but if it is only single statement, I can put it here. Okay, this way is okay, this is also okay. But this is not okay. This means the return is the same level with the, the previous return. This one should be here to be stay with the same level with if. Okay, so right here actually we can do like uh, print GCD of 
4848 gcp of 3248 print of gcp of 6542 okay let's try this okay 16 this one no right it's one, one means uh, prime to each other. Is that okay? Are you okay with this uh, Euclid uh, algorithm? Yeah, I get the algorithm. Yeah, how about Sherwin, are you okay with this? Okay, I, I pretty much, I get like the code part, but like, I'm not that familiar with the GCD algorithm. Oh, okay, okay, but you can check with the Euclidean. Um, okay. You can actually check uh, here. Okay, here it has a whole scene you can study. Let me just pass this one to you. Okay. okay. Pass this one. It's a whole bunch of scene you can study. Put it over here. Okay. Yeah, from time to time, you know, everybody come from different uh, classes or educational program, but just study whatever you need to no, okay, and and everybody may can pick, pick up more background knowledge, and that's good when you actually go to competition. You always need that. So this one actually uh, put two number here, right, and then okay. So so you can actually return multiple these, and you can return these, and you can uh, that's the tuple, okay, that's the tuple. So here, let me try another thing. Four i in range by point i. Okay, this is the for loop, and actually it's a for each loop, and that is the only loop, only for loop in. This is the only for loop in Python. And it actually is a for each loop. The enhanced the for loop. Okay. So here you need to put something iterable here. Okay, you need to put something iterable here. Okay. So range function is iterable. You it actually will, will actually will iterate from zero to four, not including five. Okay. So let's look at this. So you literally print now. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? So if I don't want to change line, this is somewhat like, okay? Is it possible to like print without the new line? Yeah, I'm going to say, this one actually is a print in Java, okay? And, and this one, print, and then I, this one is a print line in Java. Print ln in Java. Is that okay? Okay. So you need to do end with something. Okay. End with something. So let's do this. Okay. It become this, right? But if I here put a star, you put a star over there. But if you don't put anything, it will be just like end with the uh, best slash n. Is that okay? Okay. And here I can do in, uh, like, like, okay, I give it a iterable, like tuple, right? I put one, two, three, four, right? And I put i. It's a group of data, and let's see. Is that okay? Uh, here I need a print line because that one, the previous one has a extra star. It doesn't change the line. Is that okay? So a table can be put over here. It's an iterable. Okay. 
So, so from here, actually, we can also do this. We can also do say if like t equals one, two, three, four, right? T of two equals five, and then print t. Okay, and then print t. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it. I don't know, it doesn't uh, support assignment. Okay, that's the problem with this tuple. It's not as good as array. Okay? So here let me comment it out. And make sure you understand this. Tuple is only a group of data, okay? Not supporting assignment. Okay, it doesn't support uni using index to sub to assign something. Okay, that's a big problem with tuple. But actually, you can do this. You can do like the a list equals list of tuple. Then that is fine. Then you can do a list two equals five, and then print a list. Okay, then it's fine. You can convert it to list. And that would be fine. That would be the second data structure I'm going to talk about. The first one is tuple. So tuple is only a group of data. So it doesn't allow you to assign something uh, to some index. But it actually is iterable. So you actually can pick out one data at a time. Is that OK? Yeah, that makes sense. OK. OK. Now I'm going to officially uh, introduce a list. OK. I'm going to. Or, uh, officially introduced. So what is the list? List is something equals you put one, two, three, four. Okay. And actually this is like this in Python is equivalent to array plus array list. I should say more like an array list. Both okay, so you can do list two equals five and then print uh, list. I'm sorry, I shouldn't use list. This is a reserve word. So let me use a list, okay? Let me actually use a list. This is a reserve word, it's a function to convert a tuple to list. So I, I should do use this. Okay, it allowed me to override it, but it's not a good practice. Okay, so here let me see. Let's see. Here we can override with it. Okay, then after that, after that I can do a list that append for right a list. Let me put in the a list. And then a list that uh, remove uh, remove two. Okay, this has two two different meaning. Okay, this has two different meaning. Let's look at what happened. Okay. Okay, the first one. Wait. So after F4, I print out, oh, sorry, I didn't print out after remove. Okay. Okay, so so basically this one remove two, right? This one actually append a four in there, right? But if I don't want to remove two, but I want to remove index two, I should do this. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Is it list or a list? Ah, uh, it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is that okay? Okay. 
So index is the same as the index. Uh, what's that? Wait, let me see. Oh, it's actually one. Okay. And it remove the data one. I'm sorry, this is not okay. You should remove the data is one. You should remove the index. That it should remove is in remove the uh, content. Let me try. Let me see. That's the remove of content. So so this one is not okay. I, let me see. Let me see. It's actually uh, there's a something. Out. Remove object. And then there is a. <clears throat> oh, it's delete. I'm sorry. It's called delete. Wait, let me see. No, it doesn't support it. I, I forget the function, I'm sorry. There is a function for the remove of a certain index, I'm sorry. Okay, so remove image from a list. I uh, usually use this delete. I'm sorry, I forget it. It's so confusing sometimes. So actually, what you should do is like delete and then a list of two. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, okay. Remember this one is remove of object. And this one is actually. This one's the uh, delete at the index location. Okay, so so basically, list in Python has the array type of representation. Also, this type of input uh, representation. Okay, and but you have to append, remove, pop, push different functions associated with the list. Okay, and also list that you can also put at the iterable location. So I can do this. Here I can do y equals uh, empty uh, list. So this is one way to declare a, a empty list. Okay, so you can see the values as uh, declaration of a M empty list. Okay. So, so we you can do this for i in range five. I do this, and then I say y that appends my i, right? And then after that, I print y. So each time I create a object, uh, get a object from the range, okay? And this range, I actually I can also do this. I can also Put like make a iterable stuff there. This is okay. A, a bracket is actually a list, and then uh, every time I append that to there, right? Uh, oh, here I should have a C, right? Okay, so that actually is a list of characters, right? But but here I have the so this actually is similar to an array, is also similar to an array list. It has the most of the feature. Okay, and now actually I can also do this. I can also do uh, s equals an empty string, right? And I say s dot join, and I put my y there. Okay, and then I put my S. Okay, I create an empty string and I join everything in my list. Just yeah, 
concurrently list into string used as a separator. A list that should be joined to, let me try this one as X, see if it is okay. Yeah, it should be like this, I'm sorry. Slightly off, it should be assigned to some other variable. Then you will connect it together. Is that okay? So yeah, oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then and then this one is not list. Okay, not making this. It's like S dot split. Okay, let me see. No, let me see. Uh, there's a function you can split. Probably need to do S list equals this, right? And then you can do four ch in x right and then s list that uh, append ch uh, I, I have some time not using this for a while I'm sorry so so this one actually can convert each character back to a list okay but as you can see there are several ways of doing things in in Python okay there's not only one way actually there are several ways there are quite many ways you can do it, okay? So this one actually create a empty list and then append that into a list, okay? And then this one actually you print out that, that out and then join it back to a string. And then from that string, again, I I just slice it each time I get a, a character. And then its individual character will be get from there and then I append to a list, okay? so. So this is the feature of string and list right here, okay? Now let me move on a little bit faster. The next one is a set. Okay, I want to finish all of the data type right here. So set is easy. The first one, couple, you use this. Next one, list, you need this, right? A set is, a set is something like this. This one is set, okay, and then I can put it now, put a, uh, a set, a set one that, uh, I mean, one in set one, okay. I want to print now whether one is in set one or not, right? I want to print now one is in set one or not. Okay, it's true, okay? And then set one is like that, and then set two is equals four, five, okay. And let me do set three equals S1 plus S2, right? Print uh, S1, S3. Wait, that's not allowed. Two set, uh, not. Wait, let me see, okay. Oh, this one actually, I forget it. Unit, I sound set unit, okay. I think it's end sign, okay. All sign, I mean, if I, if I am correct, it should be this all sign. I think it's this one, I forget it. I, somehow I forget this set. Yeah, it's actually it's this one, okay? And intersect is, intersect S4 equals S1 and S2. This one is intersect, okay? Let, let me put a three in there so you can see the intersect. And then I can also do print, S5 equals <coughs> S1 minus S2, uh, S3, and print S5. So there are some operator you can find and then that's operating the set, okay? What's that? S5 equals this one minus. Yeah, K 
cap is actually in cap is actually in s i mean s3 uh s3 s3 is uh, in s1 but not in s3 okay union no only in s1 but not in s3 no what, what is the cap side oh this operator actually confusing sometimes so probably you can look into that okay this one actually I'm not that I don't remember a lot of things. There is also a difference. Okay, there's also a set difference that you can do. Okay. This one probably I need to check with the different comments. So that means coming this out. Okay. So that's about set. Okay, you can look into there are several easy uh, set operators. Okay. The next one more important part is called dictionary. So I get dictionary is also called map. So I can do this one, and this one is probably the most important part. Okay, so I can have A, and then 1, and then B, and then 2, and then C, and then 3. This is called a, a dictionary. And dictionary basically build a table for you. And it's also related to JSON file in JavaScript. Okay, so basically on the left hand side you have a right hand side you have one two three. Okay, this one we call it key. The right hand side we call it value. So you form this something called dictionary, and this dictionary in Java we call it map. Okay, mapping and mapping from A to B. Okay, so this one how to use it? It actually is like I can actually do for x in dictionary and then print uh, dictionary x. Okay. So basically, when I say a, a x in this, it actually will get the key, and then I print out the key's uh, dictionary value. Now I will get the value. Okay, you see what, what I'm doing right now? Yeah. This one is iterable, but whenever you say x in this dictionary, it's getting the key value. And then you can get the value of this. Okay, so basically, key and values relationship is like print dictionaries item of the key A. Okay, and I can print dictionary dot items. I can print dictionary dot uh, the value. I can print dictionary dot keys. Okay, so what are these? Okay, so when you print dictionary that items, it will be a list of tuples. A list of tuples. So it will become a list of tuples, and then that come with a key and value tuple, key and value tuple, key and value tuple. Okay, if I actually do dictionary that keys, you will get the key list. If I get the dictionary the values, it will be uh, values. Is that okay? Okay. But I can actually do this. I can do uh, v equals dictionary the values. Okay. I can do k equals dictionary the keys. Right. And then I can do uh, zip one equals zip of key and the value and then I can do a uh, big Z equals dictionary of G1 okay and then print my dictionary G 
I mean, what, what, what this is for, let me actually show you. Okay, what, what's going on here, right here, is like, I have my dictionary and I get a key value, so it becomes a list. So K is a list. So here, K is a list. Okay, here, V is another list. Okay, and then this one, zip, case and the v into a list of tuples and each tuple is like key and value one key and one value tuple okay and then the tuples list of tuples i convert it into dictionary and and then eventually the dictionary z is the same with my original dictionary d is that okay? Yes. Yes. This is just to show you how you can use the dictionary uh, and, and and deal with that. And and as I say, the Python conversion of JSON to dictionary. Why this is so important? Because the JSON file you can convert it to to dictionary. Okay, directly can be converted. And JSON, what is JSON file? JSON file is very important. It's called JavaScript object notation. It's probably the most important thing right now for internet. JSON file is called, it's called Java, JavaScript object notation. Okay, it's called JSON, it's called Java. So all the data you get from uh, internet website now those objects are written in JSON format. And JSON format has one-to-one -one mapping, easy one-to-one -one mapping to uh, Python dictionary. Is that, is that okay? okay. It's not, we're probably hard to understand right now, but it's okay. Okay. So let me, uh, let's stop right here because I try to go through the basic data type for you, okay? I'm sorry that today I don't have time to review the competition part, but that's finished up to here, okay? Okay, that's okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye now.